Hey everybody, let's go back to two dimensions and take a look at how to create the effect you're currently seeing in the background of this video. It's basically something like a kaleidoscope for which we need a source image and parameters like the number of segments or the rotation speed. So let's go ahead and program this shader. Even though we'll once again be working with our usual image, a screenshot from our game, this time we'll use it as a shader parameter, not as a background texture. That's because if we want the kaleidoscope to work correctly, the image needs to repeat infinitely, and we achieve that by setting it as a parameter repeat enable in the code. So I'll create a new scene and add a color rack to it. But this time, let's say right click, uh, create a new scene. And this time I'll finally use a control node, the green one as the root. So everything in the scene tree shows up nice and green. Actually, in these simple examples, it doesn't really matter. The shader would also work with a blue node 2D, this one. But in general, it's a good practice to use control nodes with other control nodes. So let's call it Kaleidoscope. OK, and user interface. And adding a co color rack as a child node, this one. OK, and because our image has full HD dimensions, we'll adjust the size of the color rack accordingly, setting it to 1920 by 1080. So in layout and uh, transform, as I said, 1920 by 1080 full HD and I'll scroll down to the material section and create new shader material click and add a new shader which is called kaleidoscope GD shader canvas item type and let's put it to the shaders folder shaders and create and click again to open it in the shader editor expand this area a little bit all right uh, and as always, we'll delete everything except the fragment function. So I'm deleting the vertex, eh, vertex in the white. Okay, uh, this time we'll need four parameters. Let's start with the screen resolution, which will be necessary for adjusting the aspect ratio so that a kaleidoscope is based on a circle, not an ellipse, which would be as you probably know from previous videos, vec uniform vec2 resolution and the default value is vec2 1920 and 1080 full HD resolution. Okay, next we have the image itself. As I mentioned, it needs to repeat in both the X and Y directions. So we'll enable it, uh, enable the repeat enable parameter for it. It would be here a uniform uh, sampler 2D. Let's call it text. And as I said, repeat enable. And let's give it a hint default black. So in case there is no image yet, it would at least show the black color. And to make the kaleidoscope at least somewhat confi configurable, we'll also add parameters to set the number of segments and the rotation speed. Uniform float slices number of segment with a int range and the initial value let's start with 12 slices and we could go from 2 to for example 100 and of course the step would be 1 all right and the final parameter the rotation speed uniform float speed with another int range and let's start at 0.5 so it doesn't rotate too quickly from 0 to 10 and the step 0 0.01. Okay, and that's all for the parameters. Now we can start coding. Since our effect is based on rotations, I'll go ahead and add a function to rotate, rotate, <laughs> to rotate a 2D vector. I've used it many times in other tutorials, so I'll just write it out here. 
it returns the 2x2 two two matrix, rotate and fold A for angle of rotation. And as we know, we need trigonometric functions. So float SA is uh, sine, uh, <laughs> sine of this angle. <coughs> float CA would be the cosine. And let's return the result. Return matrix 2, which is composed of two two-dimensional vectors. First one CASA and the second one VEC2, negative SA and CA. Okay, <coughs> the effect we want to create is based on folding space using circular segments and mirroring adjacent sections. That might sound a bit complicated, but we'll see that it's actually quite straightforward and can be achieved with just a few simple calculations. So to keep the code clean and organized, I'll separate this functionality into its own function, which I'll call fold. Let's write out its fundamental structure. So I'll put it just below the rotate function, and here it is, vec2, fold, with the parameter vec2 uv coordinates of the current pixel, and return uv. Okay, that's pretty fundamental, isn't it? <laughs> For now, the function doesn't do anything. It just returns the input parameter unchanged. We'll add all the necessary in, uh, transformations here later. Now, <clears throat> I'll also write the fragment function so we are ready to handle the final display of each pixel. Here it is. So first, let's start with defining the UV vector from the UV coordinates of the current pixel and define the final color, which we take simply the texture of our texture, the <laughs> pixel of the texture at the UV coordinates. Okay, uh, nothing is here yet, because as I said, uh, we used the hidden default black parameter, so this is the default value without assigning a texture. We'll get to that. All right, uh, since we want the kaleidoscope to have its center of rotation in the middle, of the screen, we need to shift the coordinate origin. And I think let's just add, uh, add the texture right now. I'll open the shader parameters, here it is. And I will drag our usual image fountain J JPEG. Here we go. Okay, so as I said, moving the center of origin to the center of the, of the image. Let's simply subtract 0.5 from here. And we can see how it shifts. Yeah, this is it. And uh, as you might know from previous tutorials, we'll recalculate the aspect ratio so that we end up with a circle instead of an of an ellipse. Let's do it here. So UVX is multiplied by resolution X divided by resolution Y. Okay, it's currently uh, deformed using this uh, aspect ratio recalculation. Okay, but that's not enough. We should rotate and also make use of what the fold function returns. So I'll add these lines, the angle calculation, then the rotation itself, and the final pixel color assignment. Oh, it's already here, so just these two lines, of course. Okay, float angle is time times speed okay so we have the constant rotation and uv is the result of the rotate function of the current angle multiplied by the result of the fold function uv all right it's rotating nicely but to avoid getting dizzy too soon, let's stop the rotation for now. So I'll set the speed parameter to zero in the inspector. Here it is, speed zero. Okay, very well. Let's move on to the implementation of the fold function. The kaleidoscope rotates in a circle, so it will be useful to convert the UV vector into polar coordinates. 
we are interested in the rotation angle, which we can calculate like this. Let's get back to the fold function and add this formula. Float theta, the angle in the polar coordinates, is a result of a tan function applied on uvx and uvy. All right, next, we'll need to know the angle of one circular segment that we want to use. We know the number of segments, which is the slices parameter. And we know that the angle of a full circle is tau, which is twice pi. So the value of the slice variable that we need looks like this. Uh, float slice is simply tau twice pi divided by the number of slices. Okay, next, we need to know which specific segment we are currently working with, because in the end, half of the segments will rotate in one direction and the other half in the opposite direction. To achieve this, we'll define something like a segment identifier, which will be an integer that we calculate like this. Float ID is floor of theta divided by value of slice. Okay, yes, I said integer and you have a float here. That's because the result of the floor function is actually a float number and we'll also need this value in the further calculations. And as we know, the shading language cannot um, implicitly cast from float to integer. So to save some manual casting, let's keep it as a float. And finally, we want the kaleidoscope to display the same part of the original image in each segment to achieve a nice ornament. To accomplish this, we just need to multiply the last two variables, slice and ID, and use them as the initial rotation angle. Let's do it here. Float angle, as I said, is slice times ID and uv would be a rotation of this angle and we need to multiply this matrix by the uv vector okay there we go we got something already let's try increasing the speed so we can see the kaleidoscope in rotation let's get back to 0.5 Okay, it's a good progress, but we are not done yet because we are missing the mirror effect that we want to apply to every other segment, odd or even. I'll stop the rotation and add a few more lines. Okay, and since we want to perform the following operation only to the half the segments, the odd ones, let's test the ID value using the module function. So I think I should put it here if mod id and modulo by 2 so the result would be either 0 or 1 it's greater or equal 1 i'll get to this briefly then do something okay and why did i use greater than or equal instead of equality we encountered a similar situation in another tutorial i think it was the one with the tilted square grid so we know that it's important to be cautious when comparing float values uh, because in some cases they could differ by very small amounts and equality might no longer hold so this way is safer I'll insert the following lines inside this block. It's for recalculating the rotation angle in the opposite direction. So we'll start with a minus sign. Uh, angle is minus and something in the brackets. And of course, uh, this code should be applied uh, before the final rotation is used. So let's just take this line and put it after the block. Very well. So we have this. Uh, bracket and in addition it's necessary to adjust the id value to get the correct polar portion of the original image for this segment like this so it would be similarly to this line just let's put slice times id but the id must be okay let's stop this the rotation the id should be improved uh, like this 
so it's bracket and plus plus number of slices and we are working only with the half of them so divide it by two and add one for the rotation adjustment okay uh, one bracket is missing here all right as we can see the effect has improved again but something is not quite right let's start the relation again and we can see that everything all segments all the segments still rotate in the same direction let's get back to zero and fix that so one last detail remains for these segments will invert the sign of the pixels y coordinate simply uv dot y is negative uv dot why wait for it all right and we are done if we increase the speed again we'll see the same effect i demonstrated at the beginning of the video let's do it yeah here we go we can achieve some interesting variations by increasing the slices parameter as well now we have 12 let's go to 64 this is a nice pattern or let's go in the opposite direction two three four six eight yeah anything can be done i'd rather not increase uh, the rotation speed too much because it could have unpleasant effects on the eyes especially for people who are sensitive to that sort of thing you can try it yourself at your own risk in any case i think the kaleidoscope looks much nicer at lower speeds anyway Thank you so much for watching. I think this is quite a nice application of various basic techniques like converting to polar coordinates, rotating a vector or folding space. As a possible improvement, I was thinking about returning the ID value from the fold function as well, which would allow us to apply additional effects to individual segments, for example, gradually fading them out to create a transition between events in our game. Anyways, uh, thanks again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.